taking the right steps towards building your investment portfolio is critical to achieving your long-term property goals. If you don't, you could end up running out of borrowing capacity. Hi, I'm Aaron Christie David, mortgage broker and founder of Atelier Wealth. I specialize in helping Australian families start out and scale up their investment property portfolios. When building a property portfolio, many investors will focus on identifying properties with high growth potential. That's great. However, that's not gonna happen if you can't get the borrowing capacity to finance your investment ambitions. Unfortunately, many property investors often get to a point where they will either run out of borrowing capacity or equity. But savvy property investors who are determined to overcome these challenges will successfully scale up their property portfolios. In today's video, I wanna help you become that savvy property investor by sharing some tips and insights into how you can maximize your borrowing capacity. Before I do that, I just wanna preface that this video is general in nature and not intended to give advice. I always suggest change to a qualified mortgage broker who can give you the best guidance for your situation. If the value of your home or investment property has gone up, you have equity in your property. This is an excellent tool for scaling up a property portfolio, but it's frustrating if you don't have the borrowing capacity to access this equity. When working out your borrowing capacity, lenders use a metric called a debt to income ratio to assess your ability to service your loan. One of the key mistakes that can limit your borrowing capacity as an investor is taking on too much of the wrong kind of debt and expenses. Luckily, there are a few quick options for this. For example, one trap that often catches investors out is their credit card limits. Even if you don't use your credit card that often, the banks will focus on your credit card limit. My suggestion is to reduce that credit card, or better yet, cut it up. Credit card limits aren't the only thing that will potentially limit your borrowing capacity. If serviceability is becoming a problem, you may need to consider paying down other types of loans. For example, if you have a personal loan or a car loan, look at options to close those debts before applying for your next property loan. Another thing you may need to think about that you haven't thought about is car leases or salary sacrifices. Sure, they can be tax effective, but ultimately they will lower your borrowing capacity. Lenders assess your pre and post tax deductions, such as salary sacrificing as well. So while you win from a tax perspective, you could lose from a borrowing capacity perspective. Ask any investment savvy mortgage broker and they'll tell you not all lenders are created equally, which means that some banks have more favorable policies that allow you to borrow more. A policy you want to keep your eye on is rental income shading. In plain English, this means some banks can take up to 20% off your expected rental income as a risk factor. As an investor, you want to look at lenders who can consider up to 100% off your rental income. This can make a significant difference, especially as your portfolio starts to increase. A similar risk policy is when banks add a higher stress test on your current repayments. This is to ensure that if your current loan repayments are on interest only, they assess your repayments at principal and interest over the remaining loan term. So try considering a lender who uses actual repayments. For property investors looking to grow their portfolios, be open to considering non-bank lenders. Often, their policies can be slightly more flexible. I find that sometimes non-bank lenders have this reputation of being more riskier or more expensive lenders, but that's not always the case. There are some great non-bank lender options out there who are investor friendly, and it could make a huge difference when it comes to maximizing your borrowing capacity. You could also consider options like lowering your interest only period, say from five years to three years, if possible. This goes back to my earlier point that your existing repayments are calculated not on the interest only repayment, but on your remaining principal and interest loan term. Also, 
you could look at other options like maybe adding a granny flat to your property to generate extra rental income or see if you can increase your current rental income within reason of course this can also help boost your borrowing capacity or if you can't do that let's see if we can review your living expenses if you can boost your savings in any capacity you can in turn boost your borrowing capacity so there you have it a little planning can go a long way if you can implement one or two of these strategies you'll be on your way to increasing your borrowing capacity and scaling up your property portfolio i hope you found this video helpful if you have any questions please feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Otherwise, make sure to like and subscribe for more property investing tips. We'll see you next time.